first question what do digit 2 series um, HTTP response calls indicate for REST APIs so moving straight to the next question the malware outbreak is detected by the SIEMs and is confirmed as a true positive the incident response team follow the playbook to mitigate the threat what is the false actions for the incident response team to our question um on the has bit you have here uh, what is the threat in this Russia traffic captured next questions so referring to this as a bit a security analyst needs to investigate the security incident involving several suspicious connections with a pos possible attack which two should the analyst use to identify the source ID of the offender hello you're welcome to five now and now this is the Cisco certified server hops professional. Uh, for me, server hops using call security technologies. Uh, we call it CB Hub for 350201. Okay, first of all, let me tell you about 591 Lab. 591Lab.com pronounced as 591 Lab. It's a top IT training and certification exam brand in China. Hong Kong, Taiwan, and Singapore. Our mission at 591 Lab is to provide our clients with exceptional exam preparation experience for certification in Cisco, Huawei, Harbor, Juniper, Palo Alto, and Fortinet exam tracks. Alright, quickly, let's look into our agenda. Rex API, um, types of web service APIs. REST APIs responses, the cyber kill chain, incident response and network protocol analyzer um, or packet sniffer. Quickly, let's drive in into our first question. What do digit 2 series um, HTTP response calls indicate for REST APIs? Okay, quickly, let's talk about APIs and API responses. An API application programming interface is a software that allows other applications to assess its data or services. It is a set of rules describing how one application can interact with another and the instructions to allow the interaction to occur. The user sends an API request to a server asking for specific information and receives an API response in turn from the server along with the requested information. It uses common web-based interactions or communications protocols and it's own proprietary standard. An API is similar to a waiter in a restaurant as shows in the following figure. So we can refer an API a waiter in a restaurant whereby the waiter uh, locate the customers to request for what the customers need and the waiter as well takes it to the kitchen in order to get those um, requests of the customers. So an API interacts between two applications and uh, also try to integrate one application to, uh, to another. Just like what well, the case we have here, whereby we have an API, uh, we have some applications on the cloud services and the mobile services, and uh, all these uh, applications can be integrated together, trying to fetch from your own information from another in order to provide the services or to provide the database application. All right, so that's API. It allows an API applications to interact with each other. All right, so moving on, a, uh, we have this type of web service APIs. Okay, so web service is a service that is available over the internet using the World Web, World Wide Web. Um, there are four types of web service APIs. 
the accessible objects access protocols so representational state transfer uh, which refers to as rest a sensible makeup uh, language remote procedure called sml rpc uh, javascript objects notations remote procedure calls json rpc all right so these are uh, different ap um api web services we have them they use different data formats to to perform the services and the most uh, popular one of this type of api um, of this web service apis is rest and it's very flexible in formatting and the most widely used uh, it does because it can uh, also use different data formats like json sml's yaml and uh, others okay then um, so rest uh, web service apis uh, is a programming interface that communicate over http rest apis use the same concept as the http protocols which are as follows http requests and responses http verbs http status calls and http headers slash body so we have the client requesting on an http protocols to an apis and also getting a response back okay so have this type of http status code so the http status code help the client to determine the reason for the errors and can sometimes provide suggestions for fixing the problem http status codes consists of three digits where the first digit is the response categories and the other two digits are assigned in numerical order there are five different categories of HTTP status source. One is informational. Uh, for informational purpose, responses do not contain a body. And the two, which is the second one, signify success that the server receive and accept the request. And the third one, which is the, uh, the category three, and that signifies redirections. The client has an additional action to take to get the request completed. Then the fourth cell, uh, which is the, the category four, has to do with the client's errors, whereby the request contains an error such as bad syntax or invalid. Uh, the fifth category, which is category five, has to do with the server errors, whereby the server so unable to fulfill the valid request that was sent by the client all right so all these status codes uh, can come up after a request has been uh, sent and then uh, yeah, getting back the response back for these errors can signify whether it's successful or not okay so then um, well if, if we can have a status code in three digits to be 200 201 202 and uh, all these have a status message 200 signify okay and 201 means it's created and uh, 202 means accepted and for the bad request 401 unauthorized and 403 forbidden and uh, 404 not found and uh, 500 internal service errors and 503 means service unavailable so any of these response can be a feedback to the request that was sent by the client or the application. All right, so um, going back to our questions, so what the two categories of HTTP response code in kit for the REST APIs? Um, so we are looking into our questions. We can see that uh, option D uh, is a good answer, which is successful acceptance of the client request for what we I've seen from my explanation. So these are the correct answer. So quickly, let's move into the second questions. And that has to do with cyber kills chain. And drag and drop the type of attack from the left onto the cyber kills chain stage at which the attacks are seen on the right. Select and place. Alright, so let's quickly talk about the cyber kill chain. 
So the Sama Kitchen was developed by Lock Eld Martins to identify and prevent cyber intrusion. When the response leading to a security incident, the object is to detect and stop the attack at the earliest in the kitchen progressions to avoid further damage. And if the attackers is stopped at any stage, the kill chain is broken and the defenders successfully checkmate the threat actors. Intrusion. All right, so we have this the um, seven steps. Uh, why the four steps has to do with recognizance, uh, researching the target information that has to do when the attacker is trying to research for the target information. And then um, the second one has to do with weaponization. Uh, that has to be a remote malware with a uh, backdoor to create a payload. And the delivery, which is the third one, by the attacker delivering the weapons to victims and through emails or other means. And the fourth has to do with expectations. Executing a code on the vulnerable systems by triggering the codes. By the attack, Attacker executes a code on vulnerable systems by triggering code. And the fifth has to do with installations, whereby the attacker installs a backdoor on the target to install malware. So, whereby the installations of backdoor on the target to install malware. And the sixth has to do with command and control. So outside the server command channel is created to manipulate target. And the seventh one, which is the last of this uh, of this step of the server creation, just do with actions on objectives. At this point, the attackers uses hands-on keyboard access to achieve the objectives of the attack. Alright, so the the check actors refers to the party instigating the attack. However, so Lock L. Martins uses the terms adversaries in the server key chain. Therefore, the terms adversary and the threat actors are used interchangeably. Okay, so we, as we can see, this first step has to do with recognizance. Cognizance is when the threat actors perform research, gather intelligence and then uh, select what targets. And the threat actors will choose the targets that have been neglected or unprotected because they will have a high likelihood of becoming penetrated and compromised. Okay, so they, uh, at this point, they plan and conduct research, they harvest emails, addresses, and uh, identify employees on the social medias, collect all public relations information and also discover internet facing servers okay so they can uh, do that so and uh, what the security operations sensors can do is to uh, get some web logs alerts and their historical searching data that are mind browsers analytics and they build a play blow uh, for detecting behaviors that indicate recurrence activities Right, uh, moving to the uh, the second stage, which has to do with weaponization. At this point, weaponization uses the information from recognizance to develop a weapons against a specific targeted systems or individuals in the organizations. It is often more effective to use a zero day attack to avoid detection methods. So, a zero day attack uses a weapons that is unknown to defenders and network security systems. Okay, so by this point, they obtain an automated tool to deliver the malware payload and also select or create a kind of document to present to the victims and select, a, uh, select or create a backdoor and their commands and control infrastructures. Security operation sensors can also defend by ensuring an ID rules and signature are up to date. They also conduct a full malware analysis, build a detections for the behaviors of known 
urbanization. All right, so then um, to the third uh, steps has to do with delivery. During these steps, the weapons is transmitted to the target using a delivery vector. If the weapons is not delivered, the attack will be unsuccessful. So the threat also we use different method to increase the holes of this delivery, the payload, such as encryptions, uh, communications, making the code look legitimate or obfuscating the code. And so securing the sensors are so advanced that it can detect the code as malicious unless it is altered to avoid detection so this point uh the defense can uh, be on block deliveries of the malware like analyze the infrastructure parts used for delivery uh, also understand the target servers people and data available to tag then first intent of the adversaries based on targeting collect emails web slot for forestive constructions okay and uh, the next stage which has to do with expectations so after the weapons has been delivered the threat authors uses it to break the vulnerabilities and gain controls of the target so the most common exploit targets are applications operating system vulnerabilities and users so these are uh, this point they exploit vulnerability to gain access use softwares like hours and uh, human uh, vulnerability acquire or develop the exploits uh, the use and adversaries triggered exploits for server vulnerabilities and also the user victim Triggers exploits such as opening an email attachment or malicious web. Link. Okay, so and now uh, we can block these making the employee security awareness trainings and periodic email testing, web developer training for securing codes, and also when we have a regular vulnerability scans and penetration test. Okay, so and some other that we can do as we can see then the the next has to do with uh, steps has to do with installation in the installation step the threat actors establish a backdoor into the system to allow for continued um, access to the target and to prevent this backdoor the remote access should not allow cyber security families or users uh, the access method must survive through anti-malware scans and reporting of the computer to be effective okay then and um, the next steps which has to do with command and control and the goal is to establish command and control with the target system Compromise holes usually become part of the network to a controller on the internet. Threat authors use command and control channel to issue command to the software that they installed on the target. So the cyber security analyst must be able to detect command and control communication to discover the compromise holes. All right, then uh, moving to the last steps, which has to do with actions on objectives. Actions on objective is the final steps of the subacution that describe the threat actors achieving their original objectives. At this point, the threat actor is deeply rooted in the systems of the organization, hiding their moves and covering their tracks so it is ex extremely difficult to remove the track actors from the network okay so at this point it's um it's extremely very difficult to be able to detect the check actor at this point 
and how they have collected users' credentials, uh, they gain the privilege, escalates uh, privilege, and then internal recognizance, and later uh, lateral movement uh, through environment, and, and also collect and treat and destroy systems and overwrite, modify, or corrupt data. So at this point, uh, what the uh, security operation centers can do is to establish an incident response playbook and then detect uh, data as um, administrations, lateral movement, and then unauthorized credentials usage. So immediate analyst response for all alerts, forensic analysis of the endpoint for a rapid uh age and the uh, network path gets captures to the recreate activities also conduct damage assessment okay so now that we have on um, the scope of the server kitchen um coming back to our question we can look into all these options and see the one that fit in to end uh to the steps of the uh, cyber kitchen all right um, down then they're looking at this we can see the uh, the one that has to do with recognitions has to be the system phone connecting to the country where no staffs are located and uh, followed by the malware placed on the target systems which has to do it has to um, be a weaponization okay and then followed by not visible to the victim start that's the delivery so the delivery of uh, the next stage so that means the is is a successful since the is not uh, visible to the um to the victim and for the exploitation so we have large amounts of data leaving the network to unusual ports okay then installations has to do with by a usb uh, with infected files started into a company's laptops right then the next uh, which is has to do with commands and control virus scan turning off okay for my options here and uh, lastly the actions on the objectives has to do with open ports and scans and multiple uh, field logins from the website so all right so answer will look like that from the top of the server kitchen down to the actions on objectives all right so these will be our answer accordingly to the server kitchen from recognizance onto the actions on objectives okay so moving straight to the next question the malware outbreak is detected by the SIEMs and is confirmed as a true positive the incident response team follow the playbook to mitigate the threat what is the false actions for the incident response team all right let's quickly talk about incident response so we have a set of teams they are these are group that are commonly found within an organization to provide services and functions to secure the asset of that organizations so we call them sites and they also respond to incidents that have always happened and also provide a proactive service and functions such as penetration testing, intrusion detections, or even security awareness training. So these are computer security incidents. Right, then uh, moving on. So this um uh this computer security incident uh, response seems uh there are many different types of uh, sites and their uh, related organization so 
Some of them can be internal in an organization and some are national based whereby they handle incident for the country. And we have the coordinating centers, some are the community centers, some are the analyst centers, and uh, some can be found in the vendor teams, and as well as the managed security services providers. All right, so then we have this NIST, which we refers to, which is National Institution of Standard and Technology. And uh, they establish incident response capability. So they also come up with a uh, incident handling guide, um, which provide the guidelines for incident handling and also analyzing incident related data, determine the appropriate response to each incident. So NIST. Uh, recommend establishing a computer security incident response capability and also creating incident response policy, incident response plans, and incident response procedure within your organization. All right, so uh, moving on, the NIST uh, incident response life cycles come up with the life cycles. Uh, which is, has to be in four stages. So NIC defined this following four steps in the incident response process life cycles. The first stage has to do with preparation, whereby the members of the site are trained in how to respond to an incident. Then we have the second stage to has to do with detections and analysis. Through continuous monitoring, the site quickly identifies, analyzes, and also validates an incident. Then the third step has to do with containment, eradication, and recovery. At this point, the team implements procedure to contain, detract, eradicate the impacts on organizations' assets, and use backup to restore data and the uh, software. And uh, we have the last stage of this uh, incident uh, life response life cycles, whereby the uh, the site then document how the incident was handled, uh, also recommend change for future response and specifies how to avoid a recurrence. Okay, so, um, Looking at our questions that is focusing on containment, eradication, and recovery. So thereby, in order for us to contain uh, the incident is by isolating that particular incident from the network so that it doesn't continue to spread. And then there are different type of incident um, which, which require different strategies. So for every type of incident, a containment strategy should be created and uh, enforced. So that's why you said, one that has to do with your network, best way is to isolate it, to remove it from the network, then you can uh, uh, find a way to eradicate. So during an incident, evidence must be gathered and documented in a clear and concise manner for subsequent investigation by authorities. Okay, still on this stage, eradication is identifying all of the hosts that need remediation and all of the effects of the security incident must be eliminated. Okay, then we have the exploited vulnerability must be corrected or patched so that the incident does not occur again. Then still on the stage, uh, we have recovery. And by recovery of the host require a clean and recent backup, or they will have to be reviewed with installation media. All right, then um, coming back to our question. So malware outbreak is detected by the SIEM and is confirmed as a true positive. 
So the incident response team follows the playbook to mitigate the threat. What is the first action for the incident response team? Now we can find out that it has been detected and is positive. Okay, so the next thing to do is to contain it by isolating the critical host from that network. And then you can uh, start to see how you can eradicate that particular, you know, incident affected the uh, system, the infections from the systems, and then beginning back to its normal function. So option B is our uh, answer to this. All right, moving on, uh, stay on this incident response. An engineer noticed that an unauthorized software was installed on the network and discovered that it was installed by a dormant user account. The engineer suspects an escalation of privilege attack and response to the incident. Drag and drop the activities from the left into the order for the response on the right. All right, so we look at this thoroughly and see so what the first steps to do onto the fifth step. Okay? So looking at this, we'll find out that the first thing to do is to uh, to conduct content scan. Okay, then the next has to do with collect logs data. So which is the next steps according to what the options we are given. So we collect logs data and then next is identify the system to be taken off. Once we have gotten all this information, the next is to identify the system to be taken up. Then the next after that is to re-image. Mm -hmm. We re-image the systems and lastly we request system patch for that system. So that's the step for the system. The by force is conduct content scans, collect lost data, identify the system to be taken off, re image and request system patch. All right, um, moving on to our next questions. Uh, refine to this as a bit what is the threat in this via shaft traffic capture? Okay, so let's quickly talk about network protocols advisor. So we have network monitoring tools, uh, which are network protocol analyzers such as Wireshark, Anticipate Dons, NetFlows, uh, security information and event management systems. These are common tools that are used for network security monitoring. Alright, so then we in the network um, protocol analyzer, uh, which are also referred to as packet sniffers applications, are programs used to capture traffic. Protocols analyzer display what is happening on the network through a graphical user interface. Protocol analyzer tools such as Wireshark and TCP DOMS can help network administrator identify protocols in the network, analyze network performance, discover network device and source and destination IP address. Then the also network protocol analyzer are not only used for security analysis but also used for network troubleshooting software and protocol development and education. All right, as shows in the figure, we have the Wireshark and TCP DOM. And they are, they are used in Windows, Linux, and Mac OS environment. So it is a very useful tool for learning network protocols from the future. Okay, so then if you come back to our question, um, from the Hesbit, we have here, uh, what is the threat 
in this Wireshark traffic captured. So we have different options there. And uh, option A, a high rate of SIM packets being sent from multiple clubs towards a single destination ID. Okay, one thing I want us to discover from what we have here is that we are able to find out that these involve just only two um, IP address going through and flow. Okay, so as we can see that we have um yeah ten dot zero dot zero dot two and ten dot one two haze dot zero dot two going through and flow. So this is the same uh these are the same IP address going through and flow from source to destination. And so so what we can see here is that we have a a target host and uh, a single IP address, a single host targeting another, uh, a single IP address targeting a host, which is uh, a victim, and the uh, multiples of same flow, uh, multiple of same packet are being sent to a single host, and this is what we can get from the information of the output of what we have here which is the same IP address I guess it's the same IP address going through our flow so looking at the one that fit in to the answer for this uh, particular exhibit is that uh, okay uh, we have option D being the answer but if you look at B a flood of ACK packets coming from a single source IP to a multiple destination all right so but if you look at we just have the same ip address on the destination so which is going to our flow because whenever the destination uh, host is returning i mean is sending back the um responding to the request or responding to the packet it becomes the source and that's what we are seeing that's why we are seeing those two ip address being the source and the destination going through a flow okay and then option c says a high rate of same packet being sent from a single source ip towards a multiple destination so everything we have here has nothing to do with multiple source or multiple destination so what we have here is a, a flood of same packets coming from a single source ip to a single destination right okay um option d is our answer all right so moving to our next questions so referring to this exhibit a security analyst needs to investigate the security incident involving several suspicious connections with a pos possible attack which tool should the analyst use to identify the source IP of the offender. All right, so now we are given an exhibit, which is this output. So what I will just do now is just to quickly go into our wall station and show us this kind of output. And this kind of output has to do with an output of Nestat. So a Nestat is a packet sniffer. Okay, so let's quickly log into our wall station so that we'll find out and see the kind of output we have as well we can be able to understand okay so i'll first of all do man next start so now we can see next start print network connections uh routing table interface statistics mass relay connections and the multi cell membership and it has a lot of um, options that we can add so that it can give us more hotspots that are related to it. So which I'm going to be adding some uh, um, options like E for programs. So if you want to see the programs ID that are running on the system, the, uh, the process ID, and then head for listing. Then we have behave, which means I want you to show me all listing and long listing circuits. 
just give me all the information that has to do with those ones that are listing and the one that are not listing okay so all right so quickly let me just do a next start uh, and get an output so that we can compare the outputs with what we have in our question all right so i'm going to be using sundo i don't want the privilege to be restricted also that's why i'm using sundo so i can use a super privilege um sundo uh, next start okay i can then add some options like dash t which has to do with give me the outputs of tcp traffic that are going on dash u which has to do also do it give me udp to um that are going on then n stand for give me a numeric information about the foreign host so because the n if you don't put the numeric information then to give you a fully qualified domain of the foreign host right which is what they generate from the output of our question then we can as well add the uh, option a so that it can give us all the listing programs that are running on the system then i can have the addition of p to give me all the uh, to give me the processing id of those um, systems that are running of those services and programs that are run all right so then i can put the password now okay so as we can see okay so let me send the traffic uh, to the internet and then do the same thing so that we can have more capturing the processes that are running okay so i'll go or just send the traffic on the internet all right, so just go to any other site and then come back and do the same thing. Uh, let's try to check now and see what we have. I can go back to the terminal. Let's issue the same thing and then let's see what we have. All right, so now we can see that we are able to get our IP address. And of course, now I'm sending some traffic out. Okay, so even if it's not yet uh, open, but look at it now. So we have more information, and these are local addresses. My local addresses, you can see that it's the same addresses. Oh yeah, we have the following addresses. Okay, so this nested app us to be able to generate, um, okay, be able to get to generate our IP address, both of the local and the foreign, and as well we are able to know the state of this different um, traffic that's going on on these IP addresses and those ones that are listed as well as the programs that are running them you can see the one that has to do with power the one that has to do with um, some local programs on my systems right and you can see that this has been established which are the states you can see this output exactly look the same thing as what we have in our question so, and then we can refer to it as a package sniffer, not malware, not SIEM, so firewall manager. Then we can go with option A as our answer. All right. Okay, so in conclusion, I want to thank you all for attending today's class at 591 Lab. We hope you find this materials informative and helpful. Remember, Practice is critical to mastering and in your skills. So review the course content and keep practicing with 591 Lab help and support. If you have any questions or concern, please don't hesitate to contact us. We appreciate your participation and look forward to seeing you in our future classes. Have a great day. Thank you.